Hi, my name is Patrick Disjordans. In this video, you will learn about the archaic var and why you should never use it. ECMAScript started in 1994 at Netscape, but public information about the language starts with the first public version of ECMAScript in 1997 as an official ISO standard. The mission of ECMA is to provide standards among many industries. Hence, the var variable's first public appearance is in ECMAScript 1.0 in 1997. Before going any further, it might be confusing to discuss ECMAScript and not JavaScript. Well, these days, the difference is mostly lexical, but at the origin, JavaScript was an implementation of the ECMAScript standard. At some specific times, JScript was more dominant than JavaScript. But the tide changed. And now, when we talk about JavaScript or ECMAScript, we thought about the same thing. Back to the declaration with var, on page 51 of the ECMAScript 1.0 specification sheet, we can read that there are two variants when using var. The one with var followed with the variable name. The second one used a comma that allows several variables to be initialized, for example, var x comma y. The specification does not contain any mention that the declaration is always at the top of a scope but emphasize that a variable when the execution scope is declared and not at the line that it is written. In other words, when a function starts, the variables in the scope are all declared. The specification defines that a variable declared but not initialized is set to undefined. This default value for a variable is also true today and carried to the keyword let and const also. To set in perspective var and let, the keyword let was introduced in ECMAScript 6.0 with his sibling const. ECMAScript was released 21 years later after ECMAScript 1. Enough with the history, let's play with var to understand a little bit better why it should be avoided. If we compare var to let, we see a major discrepancy concerning the scope. Let makes it simpler to understand the potential usage and impact in the code. Declaring with var declare globally or locally to an entire function. A small detail is that var can add a variable to the global window object that is the most outer scope, but let and const does not. Another particularity of let and const is that declaration occurs is reach contrary to var, which is declared at the top of the global scope or the function. The code only compiles with TypeScript when configured being not strict. To our advantage, TypeScript mitigates some bad habits with var. Running the code without strict cause a declaration not to be at the if, but to be at the function. Thus, the scope is different among var and the two other ways to declare let and const. You can imagine that it gets even more confusing with a large code base where the variable can be by accident declared and assigned with the intention of not altering another area of the code. It illustrates that when migrating an older JavaScript code base prior to ECMAScript 6 TypeScript, that there is a huge possibility to find errors around the use of var. It also reminds us to always be strict as possible with TypeScript's configuration to catch any potential issues. Another example that demonstrates the var voiced the declaration at the top of a function is to use the variable before its initialization, which is only possible when TypeScript is not strict. But still an interesting case to see that the value will be undefined when trying to access a variable declared later. A caveat is that if the var declaration is not in the scope of a function and use that even if TypeScript strictness is disabled, that TypeScript will throw an error saying that the variable does not exist. That feature is also in any modern ECMAScript version, which would raise a reference error that the variable is not defined. So if the barebone JavaScript handles a undeclared variable, what does TypeScript add? 
it adds the discovery of an error at design time instead of execution time. The feedback loop is shorter, no users are affected, and the developer can be confident that the variable exists. So here we are again. We are at a fork where you need to make a decision. In the description, you can see two different paths. One lead to learn about constant, and the other to learn about primitive types. So don't forget to subscribe, and see you soon.